By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against a German player named Chris, and he is playing with a Rook Egg deck. And this deck is based on obviously the card Rook Egg and also on a full play set of Nevenero's Discs. Now I am playing with a white wall deck. It's um, mono white and it's based on the power of walls. It's a brand new deck. Now before we go to the actual games, I'm first going through both of these decks, do a little deck deck. If you'd like to go directly to the games themselves, you can check the description below. And as always, you will find a timestamp that will take you directly to the first game. I would like to start this deck deck by looking at the deck of Chris. So he has a deck built on Nevenerl's Disc and Rook Egg. And basically what you can see is these two cards work together fairly well. Obviously, uh, Rook Egg is a 0-3 card from the Arabian Nights. And when it gets uh, killed, when it gets destroyed, it goes to the graveyard. And at the end of your turn, you get a 4-4 red flying creature in return. That's the creature in the egg. So when you have the disc in play and you have eggs in play, you uh, basically detonate the disc, everything gets destroyed, and then nobody has anything left, and you have a nice 4-4 flying creature. That's kind of, in a nutshell, the idea. So you also see that he plays with a full playset of Uthen Trolls, because they have regeneration. So when he activates a disc, he can re regenerate them, and they'll stay in play. He's also playing with a full playset of Granite Gargoyles. I always enjoy seeing those, and obviously they're pretty good in a... Uh, mono red build uh, because you can pump their toughness so they're hard to get rid of he's also playing with two shivans and besides this um, this trick with the nevenerals disc he's also playing with two earthquakes and again that's a card that works really well in this deck because when he destroys his eggs uh, just the same as with the disc, he gets the 4-4 four, four flyers, but also the thralls again, he can just regenerate when playing an earthquake. And of course his flying creatures, the Shivan Dragon and the Gargoyle, are not affected by the earthquake. We also see a nice portion of direct damage in this deck. Two fireballs, four bolts and four chains. And we even see more direct damage in the sideboard where we see a full playset of Disintegrates. Of course a full playset of Shatters if you're facing an artifact heavy deck and also a full playset of Red Elemental Blasts. One Atog there in the sideboard and two Stone Rains. So a very interesting deck. A nice thing to note about this deck is that this is a budget-friendly build. So if you like this, it's one of those decks that's pretty easy to acquire if you don't mind playing with any reprints. Hey, you see a lot of revised in here to kind of make this deck affordable. Now, um, let's take a look at my build. And the deck that I'm bringing to the table today is uh, called A Brick in the Wall. And... Uh, it is a wall deck, as you can see, and the idea of this deck is that you play a lot of walls, so you have a strong defense, and then you play the card Sword of the Ages. And Sword of the Ages, you can see it there at the top in the middle. It's an artifact for six. It comes into play tapped, and once it untaps, you can tap it and sacrifice it, and sacrifice X creatures on the battlefield, so X creatures that you control that are on the battlefield. And then it deals an X amount of damage to your opponent or to any other target uh, that equals the power of all your creatures combined. So let's say I have three Wall of Swords on the battlefield and I sacrifice my Sword of the Ages, I can deal nine damage. Now, as you can see, there's also a playset of Fortified Areas and Fortified Area is an enchantment from Legends for two and one, a uh, two white and one, and it gives all my Walls Banding, which is nice, but the more important aspect here with Sword of the Ages is that it gives all my walls plus one, plus zero. So it pumps up my walls and helps me to kind of gain a lot of power because that's basically what I want to do. I want to put a lot of power on the battlefield, then sacrifice my sword to kill my opponent. Now, in between, what I can do is I can play some animate walls and maybe deal some damage with a flying wall of swords. I mean, that's, that's a pretty strong creature to have. I also have one normal creature in the deck, and that's the Akron Legionnaire, and that's an 8-4 creature from Legends. And I mean, it is very expensive, it's 8 mana to cast, but then I do get 8 power, which is exactly what I want in combination with the Sword of the Ages. I also have two Righteousness in the deck, and I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed here in this game, that I can cast a Righteousness on one of my blocking walls while the Sword of the Ages is in play, so I can play... Um, a righteousness on, for instance, my Wall of Keltrop, making it a 9-8 wall, and then using my Sword of the Ages to sacrifice it after blocking, dealing 9 damage to my opponent. So that's kind of the dream here. 
Um, talking about wall of Keltrop, maybe this is a wall you don't know yet. You don't see it often in old school. It's one white and one, and it's a two one wall, which is a pretty unique stats uh, for a wall having two power. Obviously, I need walls with power. That's why it's in there. And there's a lot of text on the card. What, what it basically says is when you block, you can ban it with other creatures. Now, what more is there to say about this deck? As you can see, there are four land taxes in here. Uh, the reason to play these is that I need a lot of mana to um, cast my Sword of the Ages. And also, like whenever you play land text, the upside is when I take out my basic lands, I have a bigger chance of drawing cards that I can actually use to win the game. So I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping for it to really help me get the walls and the spells I need. Well, this is basically my deck that I'm playing with today, Brick in the Wall, and let's go to the games and find out how it performs. Game number one, and Chris is the player on the left with the Rook Act deck, and I am playing on the right. Of course, you can see it by my playmat with the Wall deck, and that's great. That's what I want to do. I want to have a Lantex turn one. Not playing a land, hoping to activate my Lantex next turn. Playing a Soul Ring instead. And look at that, he's deciding not to play anything, doesn't want to activate my land tax. This is going to be interesting, I'm, I am actually playing a second land, having four mana and playing a Wall of Swords, three, five flying. He's playing a Felwer Stone. And now playing an Animate Wall over my Wall of Swords. So this is what I talked about earlier, so I'm hoping to deal some damage here, playing a Disenchant. Over the Felwer Stone, no mana burn here because we're playing Swedish with Ravenna reprint rules. Passing turn, and there is a Mishra's Factory on the board. Used to also play a Soul Ring, and there's a Rook Egg. And now I can activate my Lantex. And luckily for me, my Wall of Swords flies, so I can just fly over the Egg, so it's not a problem yet. And as you can see, I'm making a little mistake. So sorry, Chris, for this. It's one of the first times that I'm actually playing with land text again. And I need to show the basic lands that I pick out of my deck. I can assure you they're basic planes, but sorry for the mistake on my part. So I think I've taken out two basic planes there. And I'm playing a fortified area, so that means that my Wall of Swords is now 4-5, so I can even deal 4 damage, attacking again. And of course I'm playing against the Mono Red build, so that means that he probably doesn't have a lot of answers to the enchantments. On the other hand, he does play with 4 discs, so what he needs now is just a disc and he can blow everything up. And there's the Uthen Troll, attacking here with the Factory, taking my first 2 damage. And again, activating my Lantex. Just looking up two lands here, I think it would be better just to take get all the basics out. But I guess I don't want to discard too much. Playing my third land here, attacking again with that 4-5 wall. That means that Chris is already on 9 life. So if he has, playing another wall of sorts here, if he has a uh, disc, he really needs to play it out now. And of course, I am playing with white, so there's also the chance that I still have a disenchant in my hand. And now I'm looking up three basic planes, shuffling again. And I can get him to five life here, so this is actually a problem. Maybe Chris can find a Sheevan Dragon. That would be a solution. He can trade it for the Wall of Swords. Wall of Swords attacking now. Or actually not trade it because it's a 5-5, of course, and the Wall of Swords is a 6-6, six, six, uh, is a 4-5, sorry. Look at this, playing a Sword of the Ages, and that means that next turn I'm going to win this game. And I think that's what we're talking about. And I think the sword is going to give me the victory. So this is exactly how I want my deck to work. Actually, my deck is now working better than I expected in this first game. Obviously, I'm lucky because Chris cannot find one of his four discs and cannot play out any flying blockers or play out a double bolt or a double chain. So I'm, I guess I'm really lucky with that. But I'll take it. I'll take the victory if I can. I'm not there yet. Tapping for three here. Tapping for 6, playing an Earthquake for 6. 
And that's not going to win him the game. But uh, it does mean at least that he can do something back. So uh, <laughs> this was game number one, I guess. Great. I've won with my Brick in the Wall deck. Game number two. And I feel like I was very lucky in that first game with Chris not finding a disc, not finding anything basically to deal with that Wall of Swords. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to be that lucky again a second game. So we're going to start. I guess Chris is on the play here. And let's see what's going to happen. There's a basic mountain. There's a basic plains. No land tax for me in this game. There's a second mountain. And finding that land tax now, passing turn. So I'm playing with a full playset of land tax, so it's not that strange that I'm finding them. But of course, it is very nice. Again, I'm not showing my lands to Chris as I should have. Finding three basic planes. And there's a granite gargoyle on the side of Chris. So this time he can he manages to find a flyer, and that means he can start dealing some damage. Playing my second planes, probably have to discard some lands here unless I play out something. Actually, discarding three planes. Wow. Passing turn, not playing anything. No wall of Keltrop, no spirit link to deal with the gargoyle. Just taking the two damage here. And passing turn. That means I can look for land again. And shuffling. And hopefully I can find something to deal with that gargoyle. Or at least play out a wall to have some defense. Changing my mind here. Taking back the planes. Playing a Mishra's Factory. Playing a wall of spears. The 2-3 wall with first strike. The idea is that that wall works really well with the fortified area because it gives plus one, plus zero to my wall. So then I have a 3-3 three, three first striker. And a first strike works just really well with that fortified area. That was my idea behind going for the uh, wall of spears. And also it's a wall with two power, which is pretty nice. Playing land number four here after activating that land tax again. And paying, no, not paying. I seem to be changing my mind a little bit here. Not sure what to do. Playing another basic planes. And I wonder if I'm not playing two lands here in this game. In this turn, I mean, let me know in the comments below if that's the case. Uh, if so, I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, attacked here. He goes to 18. He's also attacking me. I'm on 14 now. He doesn't want to activate his factory. Probably afraid of seeing a disenchant. And I can no longer use my land tax because Chris has stopped playing out lands. I'm now using my animate wall and attacking with both. Kind of forcing Chris to make the move and use his Mishra's factory. Instead, he's playing a lightning bolt on my factory, taking two damage here, and I'm playing another wall of spears. And that second wall of spears is pretty important because if I haven't, he could have attacked me with his factory. And let's see, tapping for land, playing a disc here, attacking, I go to 12, and playing a planes, not sure if that's the right thing to do here, maybe I should just keep the basics in hand and hope, and hope that my opponent is going to play uh, another land so I can activate my land tax again, not doing that anyway, playing a fortified area, attacking again. And maybe you think, why is he doing that with the disc in play? Well, I'm actually hoping that he's going to blow blow up the disc here. Because I cannot deal with the flyer at the moment and I'm already at 12. He's going to attack, putting me to 10. And then he's going to activate the disc. Losing everything here. And he's passing turn. Paying for playing a primal clay. 
And that's a little bit tricky with the primal clay because I get to choose a 2-2 flyer, a 3-3 creature or a 1-6 wall. And maybe I'm going for the 2-2 here so that I can keep dealing damage to Chris. Paying three, and there's the Uthan Troll on the battlefield. And I believe I actually chose for the 3-3 creature, now that I think back of the game. It's been a while. And obviously that is not the best decision because he had the Uthan Troll. And even without it, um, you know, playing against a deck with Rook Axe, I think that was a mistake on my part. Playing a Disenchant now on the disc. Playing my own factory. Tapping all the lands. Look at this, an Akron Legionnaire. This is the 8-4 creature from Legends. It's the only creature I have in the, the normal creature I have in the deck. And it's 8-4 and it can only attack alone. So when it attacks only none, um, only artifact creatures can attack with it so no other creatures of course in my deck that's not a big problem and like i said in a little deck deck vid i have it in my deck to combine it with sword of the ages and look at that a fireball ay 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 that's too bad i was really looking forward to swinging with my 84 acron legionnaire it's not going to happen though playing a fortified area and it looks like we're kind of stuck here but I'm only on 10 and I'm playing against a player with a lot of direct damage. So I'm not really happy with where we are at at the moment. And that's 3 damage on my Primal Clay 3-3 three, three creature. And now he can start dealing damage. I'm on 8 now. And I wonder if I can still turn this game around. I mean, I cannot use my Chaos Orb on the troll because he can just regenerate it. Playing a balance here. That's exactly what I needed. And remember, balance doesn't take in enchantments or artifacts, so my Chaos Orb is fine. I only have one card in hand. So this is actually the card that saves me, and we've seen that before from balance. It's just such a powerhouse when you're behind, so it's the perfect timing for me. And playing my Wall of Spears afterwards, obviously I wasn't going to play it out yet because I wanted the Uthan Troll to be gone. And that's the case right now. And look at that, a Felden's King, and he's using it, shuffling his graveyard back into his deck. And that, of course, works very well with his discs and his eggs, usually. Playing the Uthan Troll now, so he's found a new one. And now we're just top decking. I have two Wall of Spears. Remember, there are three, three first strikers because of the fortified area. And we're kind of stuck, so we're just top decking here. Chris is on 13, I'm on 8. And again, I'm playing against a direct damage deck, so I have to find something soon. And a Wall of Swords is not going to help me here. And there's a Granite Gargoyle. At least I can block it with my Wall of Swords. Ooh, for a moment there, I thought I was going to play a Sword of the Ages. Because I already have 10 damage on the board now. Playing a Soul Ring... Having to pass turn again. There's a Felwer Stone. Nothing to be scared of. And paying six. And there is my Sword of the Ages. I don't have enough power yet. And using my Strip Mine, because why not, on his Mishra's Factory. Passing turn. Playing, he's playing, Chris is playing a new Mishra's Factory. Kind of needs a Fireball here, Lightning Bolts. Something. And if I can find another wall here or a creature with power, I can kill Chris pro probably. A wolf Keltrop would already do it. Playing another fortified area and then I have enough. That's enough. I've got exactly 13 power. Boom! Wow. Oh, and look at that. Chris was about to draw his fireball that would have killed me. Oh, wow. Amazing. So that means I've won both of these games and I've won the best of three match. That was definitely an interesting uh, uh, match and an interesting two games. I, I feel like I was very lucky if you look at the fact that Chris has two fireballs in his deck and two earthquakes. And, you know, both of those, one of those four cards could have given him the victory. And after I found that um, 
fortified area and I had just had enough power to kill him the turn after he would have drawn his fireballs. I was just very lucky and also if you look in game number one where he just couldn't find an answer for my wall of swords flying around and it's always difficult of course a wall having a lot of toughness. So thank you Chris for playing this match with me and I think you deserve a rematch. So well, let's, let's, let's do that uh, in the near future. For now, uh, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to support me and support the channel, you can become a member. Please subscribe, helps a lot. Leave a comment and leave a like. Thank you if you're already doing that. If you'd like to see more old school magic games, you can click on the links that are appearing right now on the screen. And if you would like to play a game of old school magic and you have an old school magic deck, you can always leave a comment or send a message through YouTube or find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Timmy underscore MTG. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.